pitching wedge or sand wedge full swing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the most forward in your stance would be a driver, and your stance might get a little like an inch wider, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And then as the club gets longer, so you know, nine iron, eight iron, seven iron, six iron, hybrid would be like where a six or five iron is, three wood driver. So that's the fundamental ball position. Does that make sense? So I, I just kind of think of like three of them. So if I have a wedge, I'm going to put a middle. If I have a seven iron, you know, it's going to be like a ball width forward. And then like a six iron is going to be there. Five iron right around there. And then a driver on your bag. And then this is a driver, right? Yeah. So they are longer. So just put them on your thigh real quick. Like, what is this? So you can see they're longer, so you're naturally going to stand further, right? Yeah. But with an iron, so what makes the ball get in the air when it, we're hitting like a, a, a pitching wedge? When the ball's on the ground. Do we want to hit down or do we want to hit up and scoop it up in the air? Who agrees with Allison? No. You want to hit down on it and that creates backspin and makes the ball rise in the air. But when you have a driver, it's on a tee, correct? So then your club's gonna swing more up. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And since the driver's longer, it's gonna swing faster. The club mile per hour swing speed's gonna be faster, so you just get a little bit wider so that you have more balance, stability as you're swinging. Does that make sense? And then if you see how his feet are like this, so you want to get your left foot just a little flared out, so that'll help you turn through faster, so you can hit it further and also straighter because your club will keep moving with your body versus if your feet are like square like this, you're going to kind of stall and have to flip it. Okay. Grip. Right-handers. Where is this, this V formed by my thumb and index finger? Where is it pointed? Is it pointed by left shoulder or right shoulder? This shoulder or this shoulder? This is right, this is left. Right. Yes. So lefty would be pointed to the left shoulder. And you want the V, so this hand, to match. Your right hand matches your left hand, so your hands work together. So a lot of people put their thumbs right down here, which is good for putting, but it doesn't allow you to hit. So if you're going to grab a hammer, you're going to grab it like this and get leverage and pound, right? But if you have it here, I can't get any leverage, so you're not going to hit it as far. Then the club face doesn't have room to ro rotate over as you swing, so most often it's going to be pointed to the right for right-handers, and it's not going to be good, okay? Stance width, we went over yesterday. Seven iron, middle club in the back, that's about shoulder width apart. Driver, a little bit more apart, but it's all relative to your size and build and your flexibility, okay? Then when we hit chip shots, we put them closer and we're more just using our arm swing and our body turns because of the momentum of our arm swing if we're relaxed, okay? And you're going to try and get that ball on the line. They use a railroad track, for an example. So you're going to see those two, like you know on a railroad track, there's two pieces of wood or metal that are going the same way. So you want to be lined up with that first piece of metal on the railroad track and have your ball on the other. So you want that straight line with some stuff in back. And you're trying to keep that base as still as you can. So when you swing through, the ball is just going to go straight because that's all putt is, is hitting the ball straight. And the green's going to make it do other things. You're not trying to make it do other things. You're just trying to hit straight every single time. And so you can hit the putt straight every time you're going to be a good putter. So look at this right one. So look how his eyes are directly over the ball, right? He's just relaxed arms, sliding even, and then just slide, bend at the hips. Now, putting's really unique. 
but if you're not a great putter, I would get back to the basics and be more square, which means your feet are parallel to the target line, like railroad tracks. I think Daniel mentioned that, right? This would be to the right or closed. This would be the left or open. Same thing with full swing. So if we're trying to hit a straight shot, you set up square. If you're trying to hit a slice, set up open. Full swing, trying to hit a hook, set up close. Okay, so here's different grips. So standard grip is opposite of full swing where you want it more of the palms of your hands so the putter doesn't twist around. If you look at your hands, I bet you have a lifeline going down the middle of your palm. That's where you want the grip to sit against. And then your thumbs go down the middle, right? So here, here you can put sticks down to make sure everything's straight. So your feet are parallel to the path of the stroke. It has sticks just outside the putter to make sure her stroke is straight. She plays college all now, so we're, we're good. All right, so uh, there's a good image for putting. See how she has a triangle? So it's a miniature golf swing. It's a hybrid of, you know, your shoulders moving and your arms swinging under you. It doesn't open up like a full swing, right? It just, you try to swing the arms under you, but your shoulders are gonna rock a little bit. And you just try to stay stable after you get into a good setup. So I'm gonna show you pitch shot fundamentals. Look at how narrow his uh, stance is. So this is a small pitch. What's the difference between a pitch and a chip? Sure, chips go more long running like a seven iron or a bump and run where you don't have to carry very far. And a pitch is when you're gonna hit it like halfway, it's gonna carry and roll the other half. And then a lob shot, it's gonna carry most of the way and stop quickly. If I'm gonna hit a pitch shot here, is it more of an upper body swing, which would be my arms, shoulders, or a lower body swing? Here's a target line here. Whoop. Right? So if I put a stick down for my feet, and I'm hitting a pitch shot, so do I want them to be square to the target line, like railroad tracks, or do I want them to be a little open? or a little closed? No, for full swing straight, yes, but for pitch shots and chip shots, we want to be just a slightly open because it's more, so a full swing, we're really turning the hips, right? So that's more of a lower body, that's where you get power. For chip and pitch shots, we're gonna open our stance a little bit, so we're already kind of partially rotated through, and we can focus on just swinging our up, arms up and down, and if we're relaxed, our chest should turn through, and it's like a little golf swing. Make sense? So when I set up, I also get a little bit of my weight more on my left side, like 55%. I try to stay real stable on my left side, swing the arms up, turn down. So for a basic pitch shot, I have it middle of my stance ball position. For a bunker, I'm going to move it maybe like an inch forward, widen my stance, still keep it open, open up the club face so that you can see right here on my hand, right? So if I have it square, pointing straight at the target, the leading edge is against my hand, this thing, right? If I open the club face, you can see the bottom of the club, right? So this is what they call balance. You don't have to worry about It's kind of advanced. But what that does when you open it is it cuts through the sand. Or if you're in heavy rough, you can play it the same way, like a bunker shot. But if you're on a tight lie, like dirt road path or whatever, you want it more square so it digs and grabs, but not in a bunker. Or, yeah. So, when I put the ball forward, that's when I want to hit it high on a pitch shot, and I also open up the club face. If I want to hit it low, I'm going to go behind center, but within my feet and I'm gonna keep it more square, okay? But if we're in just a neutral, it's middle of my stance, 
and I have a pretty square but slightly open because it gives you a little leeway if you catch the hair fat it's not going to stick it's going to go through the grass so in a bunker then I'm just going to blast it with the face open so I can get it out you got to be aggressive it's a good example of just what you're doing with the club anyway. So like if you have a seven iron, generally you're keeping it in the same position. Whenever you get up there, you just keep your iron, you're ready to go. So maybe you need to hit a uh, weird yardage, but you need to get up a little bit. So that's what he's showing you right now is adjusting the loft on the club. So yeah. with the seven iron, I maybe have to hit it over something, but I want it to go farther than my eight iron. So I'm going to open up that face a little bit, and it might go right just because you have the face open. So that's going to add height and change your yardage, but give you more options with the clubs in your back. And I think, yeah, me and Daniel will talk about it earlier. This is the last thing we'll say so you can go outside because I've bored you enough. But you practice straight, right? So we know right from left. So every time you go to the range or a putting green, I would start warming up with like sticks down so you know what your eyes know what straight is because we're not used to standing beside something and looking like this, right? When we shoot a gun, drive a car, we're face on, right? So every day, even tour pros have sticks down. They do this every day for 50 years. They still have them down because it's awkward. So that keeps you, your brain knowing what straight is when you set up. And then you can adjust your stance, your club face, you know, for whatever. If you want to curve it left to right and you're a right hander, more forward, club face open, that's going to be more of a slice. If you put it back, close your stance, close the face, it's going to be more of a hook, right? And then there's a million variations. But if you can learn straight, slice, hook, then you're pretty good. You don't need to know everything else or it gets too complicated.